This is Speaking with the Enemy on the Thai Cats Audio Network. Here is Louis Butko. Yes, the show is called Speaking with the Enemy. I'm Louis Butko, the enemy this week, the Ottawa Red Blacks. And here to speak to it is our friend AJ Jackovic. TSN 1200, play by play voice of the Red Blacks. He's a host, he does everything there. Uh, AJ, the uh, Ottawa Red Blacks were an interesting team before everything that happened last week. Uh, they're certainly, uh, uh, certainly a, a team to watch this week. Yeah, it's been a crazy week for sure. I, I actually don't remember the last time from both a, a hockey and football standpoint where there was so much going on overlapping at the same time with both what the Ottawa senators did, uh, you know, with acquisitions and, you know, what the Ottawa Red Blacks were going through uh, in a different vein. It's, it's really unfortunate. I, I don't have to tell fans from Hamilton uh, what kind of person Jeremiah Masoli is first class individual. He's been great in terms of, you know, my dealings with him. just, but never mind that just seeing him interact as the faith face of the franchise with, you know, the fans here in, in Ottawa, it, it's, it's really disappointing just for him personally and, and, and knowing what he puts into it. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's probably been bandied about too much. I don't think the, the punishment was enough, but in, in the end, you know, that's, that's what we got. And that's what uh, the red blacks are going to have to deal with going forward. I, I just hope that, uh, you know, long term, it's it's not something that really affects Jeremiah Masoli, who's had his fair share of injuries in recent years. So hopefully, he's able to recover fully and and get back to playing football. Uh, you know, sometime later this season. And I mean, that's where the storylines would have been this week. Would we would, we would have been celebrating you know, all the things Masoli did while here in the black and gold. You know, the the on the field, off the field. But again, it's overlooked because of one player who who didn't just cross the line, you know, he burst right through it. Uh, you mentioned something about Masoli being the face of the franchise. How has he adjusted to that role and how had he adjusted to it? And, and the one thing I've noticed is just based on what players have been saying and what I've been hearing out of Ottawa this week is they're using this as kind of a rallying cry and it's a horrible thing to rally around, but uh, this is something that they hope will help them bring, grow them stronger as a group. Yeah, I think you have to move on, right? You have to play for him. It, it's It's been a, an emotional week. I have no idea how they're going to come out mm. from an emotional standpoint because it's been a very emotional week from, you know, what we saw, what we heard, everything that went into it, uh, you know, and, and in particular in terms of, you know, a lack of a response both from the Canadian Football League, which I think was a weak response, and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, which, you know, I don't think was enough uh, from their standpoint as well. So, um, you know, they, the reality is they have to get over that, right? And it's it's unfortunate, but if you want to be a football team that's going to be battling for a playoff spot, it starts now. You've got 10 games left against Eastern opponents, two against Edmonton as well. The East is up for grabs. Ottawa and Hamilton are in the exact same spot, all at 0-4, and, and a win this week puts them – you know, potentially tied for first by the end of the weekend, depending on what happens with the Argos in their touchdown Atlantic game against Saskatchewan. So it's, uh, it's crazy. Sometimes you, you only see this type of stuff in the CFL, but uh, that's why we love it as well. So certainly uh, should be a lot of fun seeing uh, who's able to take the initiative uh, tomorrow. Yeah. And, you know, coach, Joe, I asked him today about it you know, one in 13 the East against the West coach had no comment uh, as what he told us. He said he was focused on the Ottawa Red Blacks, but what a, what a weird situation the East finds itself in. Like you say, with uh, the team who wins, this could be in first place. And that, that is, that is crazy. If Ottawa were, if, what does Ottawa need to do if they want to win this game, what, what's going to have to come together to, to get a result. All three phases. Uh, special teams has been the strength of this organization and, and probably, I think, the best special teams unit year in, year out since Bob Dice arrived in 2016. That's a group that was taking too many penalties, but I thought they played a, a terrific, you know, all-around game on special teams uh, last week against Saskatchewan. You know, most accurate kicker in CFL history in Lewis Ward. Good cover teams. Terry Williams, look, no one's going to replace 
Devontae Dedman. I mean, he's, you know, one of the best return men we've ever seen in a very short span in CFL history. But I thought Terry Williams did a pretty good job in that regard. And, and Richie Leone is just a game changing punter that, yeah. you know, is able to dominate in terms of net average. Now that net punting involves 11 other guys on the field as well in the cover team, but he's just got uh, a cannon of a leg that, you know, with the hang time and, and the placement and everything that he can do is a game changer. So that's the least of their worries, as long as they can continue to keep penalties uh, not being a problem for that unit. Uh, defensively, look, I thought they did a great job to start the season. Um, got eaten up a little bit the last couple of weeks, uh, partially due to injuries. Uh, you're, you're missing Money Hunter, your shutdown corner, your Sam linebacker and Patrick Levels, your Will linebacker and uh, Frankie Griffin, who, you know, was outstanding the first couple of weeks of the season before he got hurt. And Abdul Kenna as well. So you're missing some key components. Three guys made their first CFL start on defense last week. And hopefully, you know, there's no changes uh, in that unit this week. So you would you would hope that from an Ottawa perspective that those players should be able to, you know, perform even better week after week. And then, you know, the offense has been the biggest problem going back to 2019. That's why Paul Lapolis was brought in as the head coach and offensive coordinator, you know, for the 2020 season. Obviously, there was no 2020 season. Last year, offensively, uh, was a disaster for Ottawa. They only scored 13 offensive touchdowns in 14 games, so didn't even average one a game. And now you take away Jeremiah Masoli. But I think the other pieces are in place. A completely revamped offensive line. They do have two healthy bodies back this week. They're starting left tackle on your Cambry Williams, and they're starting left guard and Hunter Stewart. So that will help. William Powell made his Red Blacks return last week. He was injured throughout camp and didn't play their first three games of the season. Uh, he looked great. And so, you know, this is a guy that, at 34, you don't want to give him 25 touches a game, but still a power runner that is still one of the best at that position in the Canadian Football League. And you've got, uh, you know, a better complement of receivers. I, I guess the thing is, the last couple of weeks, it seems like they've had trouble getting guys open. So uh, that that is going to be uh, something worth watching, certainly uh, tomorrow night. And, and just, again, how does Caleb Evans perform? It's not as first time around he was two and five last year as a starter so uh thrown to the wolves a little bit last year a little bit green we saw some good you know we saw some rookie mistakes uh this year i know in training camp and in practice he's looked really good uh probably just okay in preseason and you know na i would say hmm. in terms of what we saw last week was six six plays once Masoli went down so um let, let's see if there's some growth there i know the coaching staff thinks there is. It's going to be his show or potentially Nick Arbuckle's show uh, the next 10 to 12 weeks until Masoli is back. But open competition, he's going to have every opportunity to win the job starting tomorrow uh, with this game against the Ticats. Uh, a couple of former Ticats not named Masoli <coughs> will be back here for the uh, – will be back in Hamilton for the first time since signing the offseason. How have those – Familiar faces to us, Darius Sirocco, Jalen Acklin, and Lorenzo Malden. How have they looked in the uh, the black and red instead of the black and gold? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, we've seen some good from all of them. Sirocco is a player that, uh, you know, he anchors the offensive line, and I think that seems to be a better group this year. A little bit of struggles in, in terms of uh, some of his snaps in the third game of the year against BC, but overall he's been – a pretty steady influence. Uh, Jalen Acklin, a little bit quiet last week, but, you know, prior to that, he was, you know, amongst the, the leaders in the Canadian Football League uh, uh, in, in all categories uh, receiving-wise. So certainly he's been a great addition, a uh, great character off the field uh, as well with a super personality. And and Malden, I, I think, has been really good, uh, as, especially last week in, in pressuring the quarterback. They were able to get, five sacks last week as a group uh, on their defensive line it, it's been kind of a weakness from day one for this group they've never really had a dominant pass rusher we'll see if both he and praise martin Oguike can find a way to to be the guys that can get that consistent pressure on the quarterback uh, but uh, I, I thought he was really good last week so encouraging signs from all three of the ex uh, tie cats that we're going to see play and jackson bennett's another player right 
one, yeah. two punch again, William Powell's 34 Bennett, uh, you know, should be able to get a few opportunities to, you know, real good special teams player, but uh, a guy that, you know, played running back in Ottawa as a kid in high school converted to defense when he played for the Ottawa GGs and, you know, the Thai cats converted him back to offense uh, along with his special teams play. And I think, you know, a guy that, that has some pretty good raw ability as well. So uh, we'll see if he gets uh, a few touches tomorrow night as well. And then, of course, Sean Burke, the uh, general manager in uh, Ottawa. Burke, he's always been a character. And uh, this is it, it's been really great to see him you know, running his own team now as the GM. But what's your what's your sense of uh, Sean Burke? Is this as as close? We're going to because he's still tinkering, right? It's only his first year. How has he kind of made this team in his own image uh, coming in, inheriting what he inherited last year? Yeah, I, I really like what he's done. I think he went in, went out in the off season and addressed, you know, all the potential needs that this team had. I, I love the fact, like this week's a prime example, right? You had, you know, a pretty traumatic situation losing your starting quarterback, especially in the manner that they did. And, you know, rather than have everybody sit around and pout about it, you know, you had two pretty young quarterbacks, a first year guy and Tyree Adams and, uh, mentioned Caleb Evans, who's going to make his eight CFL start. They needed some more experience. He didn't uh, waffle. He went out and, and brought in Nick Arbuckle and, you know, interesting, you know, only in the CFL type thing, right. Where Nick, you know, was brought in to replace Trevor Harris uh, and then Dominic Davis uh, after that yeah. as the starting quarterback in 2020, um, you know, no season. He was on zoom calls the, the entire time with the group. Uh, 2021, uh, they, they brought in Matt Nichols and, and Arbuckle ended up going to Toronto and, you know, maybe in a 32 team league, he doesn't end up coming back, but you know, no bridges were burnt and he's back as a red black. And, and, but that goes to show just, you know, pro the proactive nature of what Sean Burke has done. I, I really like my dealings with have been, have, have been outstanding so far. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think he's going to lead this team to, to really good things. Uh, is it going to be this year? We'll wait and see. I mean, certainly it's a blow losing your starting quarterback and 0 four out of the gate, uh, you know, puts you in a bit of a hole, but I, I think long-term he's going to have this team uh, certainly on the right track. Well, the, whoever wins this game, we'll be talking about them possibly being in first place. Whoever loses this game, at least we can uh, sleep knowing that they're only one game out of a playoff spot. So even at 0-5, uh, only in the CFL, like you say. Uh, AJ, you mentioned it's a busy week in Ottawa. Obviously, uh, Pierre Dorian's been busy with the uh, the Senators. I'm going to put you on the spot here, a non-football related question. Do the Ottawa Senators finish with a better record than the Toronto Maple Leafs next season? <laughs> How about the Toronto Maple Leafs finish with a better record? They play in round one, and Ottawa keeps the... Uh, keeps one streak going and breaks the other. How about that? Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not going to tell you which one's going to be I, broken. Yeah. The Leafs have had the, uh, the Sens number in playoff series. Of course, uh, the Leafs haven't won a playoff series since 2004, but I'll say why not prediction Leaf Sens round one and the Sens finally break their drought against the Leafs wow. and continue the Leafs drought. Um, I'll, I'll take I'll take Ottawa's tandem of Forsberg and uh, Cam Talbot over uh, <sighs> Matt Murray and Ilya Samsonov. And uh, I love the top six. They still need a defenseman, though. Uh, if Ottawa's going to make that jump, I think they're right in the ballpark playoff team right now, but they have to go out and get a defenseman. Easier said than done. Just, hey, let's just go find a top four right shot defenseman. And, you know, a lot of those just uh, – hanging on trees right so um but let's say it's you know wow. what'll be great it's been a long time since both of these teams have been good and relevant at the same time since these teams were playing you know four times in a very short span in the playoffs late 90s early 2000s so hopefully we get to see uh, that again we saw like i'm from edmonton i thought it was awesome seeing edmonton and calgary play a battle of, uh, of alberta for the first time since 1991 be cool to see uh, the first battle of ontario since 2004 it would be great for hockey well said uh, aj appreciate you doing this uh, enjoy the game tomorrow thank you this has been speaking with the enemy i'm louis butko and uh, you can catch us on the tight cats audio network